Okay, this is part two of the video on your SA2 examination paper and we are going to continue with section B. Now in section B, the first blank is asking for what is this box here. Okay, so we need to, in order to find out what is this inside, we will take a subtraction. Okay, we take a bigger number, we minus away the smaller number to find out what is the difference. So let's do our regrouping. We have 8 here. This is 13. 13 minus 7 is going to give us 6. Okay, 8 minus 6 is 2. 1 minus 0 is 1. 7 minus 3 is 4. Okay, so the answer in this case is 4, 1, 2, 6. Now, just to make sure that my answer is correct, what I can do is to add back to see if the answer is really correct. So 7 plus 6 is 13. 7 plus nine, uh, 2 is 9. 0 plus 1 is 1. And 3 plus 4 is 7, which is the correct answer, 7193. So the answer must be 4, 1, 2, 6. All right. Next, let's do a 209 times 5. And 209 times 5, 9 times 5 is 45. Okay, 209 times 5 is 45. So the 4 goes here. 0 times 5 is 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. And 2 times 5 is 10. So the answer is 1045. So again, if I would like to check, I will do the opposite, which is to divide and see whether my answer is correct. It gives me a 10. Okay, bring down a 4, I can't divide. So I'm left with 45. And 209, 45 to get 0. So 209, I get back. So 1045 must be the correct answer. Question number 18 uh, is a division, so I will need to do my division working. So 8 divided by 8 is 1, which gives me 8 in total, 0. Bring down a 7, which I can't divide at all, so it gives me a 0. I still have 7, bring down a 3, and the next number that I can multiply is 9. 9 times 8 is 72 which gives me a remainder of 1. So the answer is 109, remainder 1. Okay, so same thing, I can always check my answers. 109, I need to multiply back by 8, which gives me 72. 0 times 8 is 0, plus a 7 is 7, and 1 times 8 is 8. Then, because of the remainder 1, I need to add the remainder 1 back. So I get back 873. So it is correct. So my answer is also correct. So you can see from the first three questions, although they look very, very simple, but what I have done is I have done a check to make sure that my answers that I got is actually correct. Okay, I know some of you in class, you already have this habit. Keep it up. Okay, some of you have learned this since primary 2. Some of your math teachers will have asked you to check your answers, check your answers. This is exactly what I mean by checking your answers. You do the opposite, alright, to see whether the answers are really correct. So my expectations is that at least questions 16, 17, 18 should all be correct because they are the easiest question to get marks. And they are all 6 marks together already. Okay, now next we are going to arrange fractions. This is something that we kept doing in class. And I, I, I'm very sure most of you are already experts in it. So in this case, there are two different ways. I can go by common denominator. I can go by common numerator. Now for me, I would like to use the common numerator. Why? Because the numbers are smaller. It's easier for me to know which common numerator I can use. So in this case, I think 5, 1, and 3, all these numbers, 5, 1, and 3, I can make them all into 15 because they have a common multiple of 15. They all have a time table inside with a 15. Okay, 
So now that is done, I need to see how I got the 15. I multiply that by 3. So if I do that, I must multiply that by 3 below as well, which gives me 27. Okay, what about the second fraction? To get a 15, I need to multiply by 15. To get a 15, I also need to multiply by a 15. So 15 times 3, let's see, is 45. So my denominator should be a 45. Now how should I get this to a 15? I multiply this by 5. And if I do that, I multiply that by 5, I will get 25 as well. So now, our job is then to decide which fraction is the smallest. Remember, now that all the numerators are the same, the denominator is the one that we will look at. So if you can remember the rule, it says that the bigger the denominator, the smaller the fraction. Right? Because now that all the numerators are the same, we only care about the denominator. So the smallest have to go here. Because this one has the biggest 45 of the denominator. Followed by the next biggest one, then the last one. Okay? So we do that to the question also. This should be the first one. This should be the second one. This should be the third one. So if I write it in out in answer, it will be one third first, followed by five nine, then three fifth. Most of you are able to get to this, okay? Except a small number in class, you were stuck. You were only able to go up to this stage, okay? So I appeal to you. I beg to you. Now that you're in primary three, get the foundation right, so that in primary four, your job is easier. Arranging fractions will still be something that we can test in primary 4. Okay, most of you arrive at the yellow box, but you are not able to rearrange them properly. Okay, question number 19 is done. So, see again, one page, look at the number of workings that goes inside. Okay, question number 20. This is about Sandy who bought uh, a book that cost $23.80. She also bought a toy that cost $15.60. How much in total? So we are going to put all the money in together. That's $15.60. Let's make sure that our points are matching in straight line. Then we add now. This is 14. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. 2 plus 1 is 3. So the answer is 39.40. Okay? Alright, now question 21. What is the area of the square? So let's label out all the sides first since we know that all sides are equal in a square. Okay? And this one is the length. This one is the breadth. So when we talk about area, area is equal to length times breadth. The length is 9, the breadth is also 9. So 8 times, sorry, 9 times 9 gives us a total of 81. Okay, still a handful of you are doing 9 times 4. Please, it's not. How can the breadth be 4? All sides should be equal. The numbers should both be equal. Okay, now Mrs. To had $156. It was shared equally with all the four children. So 156 is going to be shared with four children. We are going to find out how much each child gets. So it's a division problem. We have a zero here. So it gives us a zero. We bring down a five. We get three. So that's a 12. Three. Let's bring down a six. And we get... 9 which is with a remainder of 0 so each child gets 39 so again if we have the time in the exam what do I suggest I suggest doing the opposite to see whether I get the same answer back okay so neither this $39 must be correct okay so that is for page 10 Okay, now let's move on to page 
question 23 find the greatest even number so for me to form a greatest even number this number must come first 8 must come first all right now followed by i should choose a 6 right i should choose a 6 because that's the next greatest number so i put a 6 here i put a 3 and then i put a 1 okay so is this the correct answer now they are asking for even number so one is not an even number so this cannot be the answer so let me try a second possible answer let's try a second combination now when i see through the mark exam papers i realize some of you did this method which i'm very happy about you try all the possible answers you cross out those that you know is wrong so let's try a possible second guess eight again all right this time round because i will need the even number to be at the back so i have no choice but to put my six behind okay now if i do an eight and i do a six this this me with only two more numbers so between three and one which one is bigger three right so i'll put three in first followed by one so now i check i have got the greatest number eight then all my even number is at the last digit and 3 1 3 is bigger than 1 so i put 3 in first okay this must be correct another possible combination is 8 1 3 6 but this is not the greatest okay so the answer is 8 3 1 6 so i see many of you did this guess and check which is very good you list out all the possible answers and you tell yourself which one is not correct okay now this is question 24 now miss lee has 90 cm of ribbon miss tan has 25 cm more so we will probably want to find out how much is miss tan have miss tan will be 90 with 25 more so 115 okay let me just do a check to make sure my mental sum is correct and how much is the total if they have so i have to add both together and let's see what is 115 and 90 it gives me a total of 205 now 205 is the centimeters so we need to convert 205 centimeters into meters and centimeters okay now we know that every 100 cm is equals to uh, one meter so since there are 200 centimeters there must be two meters inside and how many centimeters five centimeters so answer is two meters five centimeters okay to double check my answer i can always see and check again two meters is the same as 200 centimeters five centimeters is just five centimeters so do they add up to 205 centimeters yes so two meters must be the correct answer two meters five centimeters okay now question 25 can get a little tricky in fact i thought a model would be able to help now you have got a pencil case six pens they cost 117 so what they told you is the pencil case is three times as much as a pen now in common sense we know that all pencil cases are more expensive most of the time than a pen so in this case i'm going to have a model that shows the case that is more expensive the pencil case the pencil case is three times as much as the pen so this is how much it costs okay but in real life the person actually didn't only buy one pen the person bought six pens so what i can do is this is only one pen the person bought a total of six pen so i have to draw out five more pens so that there's a total of six pens being bought okay so now i know that there's a total of six pens and one pencil case and the total price is one one seven all 
right now with our colors we are going to see this one one seven dollars is being shared by how many equal units one two three four five six seven eight nine so nine units gives us the total of 117 so we are trying to find out 110 which is one unit because a pen is one box one unit we will need to do a 117 divide by 9 okay so this is division again which gives us 13 dollars so 13 is the correct answer okay now as of now i am at page number 11 question 25 so this is all the workings these are all the workings that we have okay at this point in time i will also want to share with you our attendance code for you to indicate that you have been watching this video so the attendance code is actually let me see okay the attendance code is actually here all right so i'm going to show one at a time this is from register one to register 24 you can pause the video to write down the attendance code Okay, this is from register 25 all the way to the last person, 39. You can pause the video in order to write down the attendance code. Okay, so I'm going to move on to question 26 all the way to the last question. Ah, question 25, isn't this familiar? We have done this in our workbook. So you want to shape 2, 9 okay but the problem is when you count the boxes they are all together nine boxes so how there's only three boxes in total in the fraction but we want nine well just make them equivalent times three times three so there should be six boxes shaded two third is the same as six nine so nine total boxes six boxes must be shaded but the thing is, there's already two boxes shaded. So how many more boxes to shade? 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. So you should shade 4 more boxes in order to get a total of 6. Now, how many, where do you shade doesn't matter. So long you shade 4 more. Alright, so you should not get this question wrong because we have done this in the workbook before. Okay, something very familiar. Okay, question 27 is a very simple proportion question. 1 kg of grapes is $10.50. So how much do 2 kg of grapes cost? 2 kg, doesn't this look like unitary method? If 1 unit is $10.55, then 2 kg will be another $10.55, right? So we can do by addition because addition is easier of course if you know how to do my multiplying that's fine as well okay that's going to give me $21.10 this is for grapes now the person didn't just buy 2 kg of grapes but 1 kg of cherries which is $17.95 so the last step will be take this 2 kg plus the cherry so we are going to add the cherries in which is 17.95 and we are going to see how much that gives us the answer is 39 dollars and five cents 39 dollars and five cents okay now just take note in this case you notice i have done um, units written so of course this is just a workings if you choose not to have your dollar sign make sure you do not have dollar sign throughout 
you don't somehow in the middle the dollar sign appear out of nowhere okay but your final answer should still have the dollar sign okay so if you want to have the dollar sign you must have the dollar sign throughout right this is for page 12 now we're going on to page 13 which is a bar graph the bar graph shows the amount of money may save every month from january to may now may save three times in may than in april so first thing again we are interested in two months april and may okay april is here may is here but we do not know how much money in may right we have to obviously read the bar graph and find out the number so in this case let me draw the line it stops here so what number is this uh, i can do by guessing so i can guess 410 420 430 440 450 no it doesn't skip by 10 so next i'm going to try 20 420 440 460 480 500 so yes it's correct each line skips by 20 420 440 460 480 and 500 so this amount must be 480 so the question says you save three times in may compared to april so if i can show you a model you save more in may than in april so you save three times okay now if may you actually save 480 then the question is asking how much you save in april all right so if you go by the units method it says that three units since three units is 480 right that's what is shown in may three times then we are keen to know how much is one unit we divide it by three so 480 divided by three let's find out 1 18 will be 6 18 bring down a 0 nothing to multiply anymore you get 0 so the answer is $160 so we check our answers 160 times 3 does it give us back 480? yes so the answer in this case is $160 okay you, the person saved more in May Okay, our last two questions. So here, Zixian took 45 minutes to jog from her house to the playground and then another 1 hour 35 from the playground to the supermarket. So in total, from the house to the supermarket, what is the total time? Okay, so this is about addition. All right, this is about addition. How long did she take to travel? So what we can do is one hour 45, sorry, one hour 35. Let's write down the equation first. We need to add a total of 45 minutes. Okay, now if you remember, I went through something like this in class. I said hour plus hour, minute plus minute. So in this case, I'm going to show a different color code. Red is for hour. Blue is for minutes. So hour plus hour is still one hour. What about 35 plus 45? Let's check. 35 plus 45 is 18 minutes. Now many of you left your answers like that. One hour, 18 minutes, which is wrong. Okay. How can the answer be left in 80 minutes? Because 80 minutes can be regrouped, isn't it? You can regroup them into another hour. So it gives you a total of 2 hours because one of the hour has been changed to 1 hour 20 minutes. So 2 hours, you are left with 20 minutes. So that is the answer. 2 hours 20 minutes. Okay? Don't leave your answers as 1 hour 80 because that is not correct. 
you are supposed to regroup the AT into 1 hour and 20 minutes. So it adds up to a total of 2 hours 20. Alright, finally our last question. This question actually uh, is quite a killer because it did uh, kill a lot of people. So when it comes to area and parameter, that one thing that I say is always label the picture. Okay, make the picture more friendly to you. Write out all the numbers that you know. So if this is 4, then this must also be 4, right? Then this must also be 4. Now, if that is 4, it means that the opposite here is also 4. This is also 4, and this is also 4. Now, interesting part. Now, this is 4, and this is 4, this is 4. So what can you say about the one in blue? 4 plus 4 plus 4, isn't it? So this is a total of 12. Now, the one in blue is also the length, if you can see. It's also the length, right? Now, if that is a length and that length is 12, that means this part here, look carefully, this part in blue is also the length of the rectangle, is also 12. Then, this part here is also going to be 12. Okay? Now, can you see that what Mr. Lee has done is I've used two different colors. You see, I got, that's why I got you to bring your colored pens in the exam. The red ones are the ones for breadth and it's 4. The blue is the length and it's 12. Okay, now are there other sides that we also can find out? What about here that I just highlighted? What about this part here that I just showed? Isn't this also a breadth and it is 4? And if there's a 4, isn't the opposite side here also 4? Right? So can we already find out the parameter? So same thing, let's put a starting point here. 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 12 plus 4 plus 4 sorry, plus 12 plus another 4 and plus 12 okay so if you do your addition properly you will be arriving at the correct answer of 56 okay of course it takes time to add but it is still possible to add all right so some of you may add by grouping all the same numbers together so that is a five groups of four is 20 and then three groups of 12 is 36 so it's also 56 as the answer okay that's another way to add but the idea that i really want to show you is this you can see that why i got you to bring colored pens colored pens helps you to see okay that the blue one is the length whereas the red one is the breadth so to find the parameter we take the sides Okay, see the laser pointer, we find the sides. 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 12 plus 4 plus 12 plus 4 plus 12. Okay, which will give you the final answer, 56. If I remember correctly, quite a number of you actually almost got full marks for this section B. But because of question 30, you didn't get full mark. So it's good to learn this up. This is quite an interesting question. Okay. So I'll see you back in class with your attendance code ready. Goodbye.